Hello! It is Tuesday night, at least where I am. So happy time zone to wherever you are. And uh, yeah, I'm Laura Van Arndonk Ba. I still don't have a catchphrase and I am losing my freaking mind, you guys. Oh my gosh, today has been such a ride and we very nearly didn't have this stream. So uh, I just got internet back a few minutes ago. So we're gonna go as long as we have <laughs> the Wi-Fi's. Um, actually, I'm hard lined in. It doesn't matter. We're gonna go as far as long as we can. So please just bear with me. If something um, happens, we will we will do our very best. And, uh, and I just realized I can actually kill a couple of things to try to make the internet stay up longer. We'll see. Give me a second to make that happen. All right, all those happened. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna try to stay up, but. Several things going on. Um, as some of you may know, it is, well, you probably all know it's July, but it has, July is World Anvil's Summer Camp World Building Challenge. And along with that, um, because all the prompts, uh, I am bringing in, da, 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 shoosh, with sound effects, Janine Ippolito to talk to us about writing prompts. So uh, I have to I have to give you the, the rundown on uh, on Janine, but I'm going to try to do it in a condensed form so we can actually still have a stream tonight because Janine's got a lot of hats that she puts on. Um, so she she's an author of fiction, of nonfiction, and of poetry. So she's got all the categories going on. She uh, is an editor. She co-owns a publishing company. She uh, consults with authors about marketing. She, uh, oh gosh, like I'm, I need a, I need, I need, cue cards here. I'm going to run out of things. What else do you do? You have so many things. Uh, you podcast like, yes, right. Yes. Cause she does have a tagline cause she is more together. Yes. Uh Oh, uh Oh, hold on people. Hold on. The people are telling me they can't hear you. Why? How is that? Give me a second because I can hear you and I see the little thing thingy flickering so somebody somewhere can hear you. Hmm, okay, I'm sorry, give me a second. I swear today it is, is I don't know if Mercury's in retrograde, whatever. So, okay, let's go. Um, <laughs> Shy Red Fox is saying, give us Janine's words, okay. Hold on, we're, we're, I'm working on this. We're gonna see what's going on. I do not know why it is being like this. Also, I have a dog who is having a minor breakdown because the search team is using my property tonight. So there are people outside hiding dead people and my Doberman does not understand why this is happening. So I am so sorry, let's keep going here. Um, I know, I know, sorry. Um, all right. Say something for me, Janine. Wow, why is why is that not coming through? Um, yeah, it, no, it's just grabbing me, which is so weird. Um, I don't know. This is bizarre. Like I can see. I can, I can see everything. I see where you should be. Um, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you songbirds in the chat is like, we're here. We're not going anywhere. Take your time to figure it out. Thank you so much because I'm over here. Like what the heck? Um, all right, let me see if I can do a little cheating over here. Yeah. So while, uh, while I'm pushing uh, all the buttons. Yeah. Yeah. A little interpretive dance. That'd be great. Um, a little, little ASL maybe, um, yeah, yeah. So for those of you who are newer to the stream, um, a search and rescue group does train regularly on my property because I have acreage with woods and fields and all the things. So, um, so it is not unusual for people to be hiding dead people on my property. Like that's normal. It's just not something that my dog you know, always understands she doesn't read the calendar. So yeah, but she actually didn't, doesn't care much about because, uh, we've done, you know, my dog, yeah, so much training and she's a bit of a honey badger anyway. So 
we made stuff that was really good. I do not know why this is not coming through. Okay. Um, um, I don't think it's you. I think it's something to do. Okay. Let me hang on. It's something to do with, with the zoom link. So worst case scenario, I will hold on, hold on. Maybe. Okay, so now I suspect everybody except me can hear Janine. Let's check this chat and see if that's the case. (laughs) Um, Can you hear me? Say something. Okay, good. The chat can hear Janine, but now I can't. So this is going to be great. Your favorite flower Um, or your favorite, um, I don't know, your favorite flavor of ice cream? We're going to make this work. (laughs) Good. Okay. (laughs) So I will just lip read and... (laughs) Eventually, you will know by their answers if they start saying things about ice cream. You will know. <laughs> hmm. <sighs> well, life is always an adventure, right? <laughs> so close, so close. <laughs> it's all good. Shyren okay. Fox wants you to tell all the secrets before I can get back in. Oh, so, um. Well, All maybe right. I should try to introduce Laura Vab then. Like, I could do that because, like, she can't hear me right now. So <laughs> I could say all kinds of fun things about Laura. Um, I don't know. Like, let's see. All right. Why? No, my are brain you is like going this? completely blank. Except Why? that she has a Why? really fun house. And her dog's adorable. And. I stayed at her house once in 2017 because I was there for Indie Pop Con and she has really awesome books that like bring lots of pain and lots of, well, she has funny ones too, but mostly like it's doom, but in a good positive doomy kind of way. To be honest, I'm not finishing them until she finishes the series and I get to the end and know those are happy ending. But if those of you who love her books like right uh, now, I hope like you're telling some awesome really books. good stories. I'm gonna grab another headset. I'll be right back. <laughs> I have no idea if I'm still even live if anyone can hear me because I can't see anything right now. But um yeah, so read her books. And uh otherwise yay writing prompts. They're awesome. You should use them because they're fantastic and they can secretly help you conquer the world. Okay, hold on. I like hear Janine. <laughs> can everybody else hear Janine while I hear Janine? I can't see the conversation. I've just been rambling okay, yeah, about fun looking, So, um, Okay, so somebody said, uh, Chai Red Fox said, yes, they are so good books. So I hope that, I hope that was... <laughs> I don't know what books they are, but they're very good. Okay. You see dead tile. T- let's see. Um, no, sorry. We, we, nobody got to help hide any dead bodies. That, that, that's, uh, although, although I will say that the search team is always looking for volunteers and they're always looking for living volunteers. This is a safe thing to volunteer for. It's actually the really sweet job. Like you just go sit in the woods and read a book until they find you. It's fantastic. So, okay. Hey. Oh, you can hear us both. Hooray. Oh, okay. You can hear us both. Can you hear me? <gasps> yes. You can hear us both. <laughs> this was way more effort than that should have been. <laughs> I'm so okay. sorry. I was um, a teacher for eight years. I know how to like deal with weird, awkward gaps where you're there at the big event on time and then they're like oh sorry teachers you have to entertain people for like this whole time because yeah Yeah. of this so yeah so um, I'm trained and sewing is half battle in the chat is Elena easier than third graders (laughs) (laughs) they can't throw things that you yeah (laughs) well technically the third graders shouldn't have either but you'd be surprised um (laughs) here here they like they can't reach you so it's all good yeah Yeah. they throw things that just entertains their cat yeah no so (laughs) elena in the chat and i used to um mc every other year for anime Mm -hmm. central you know and so there'd be like three thousand people in the room and we're emceeing for the masquerade Uh but then anytime something went wrong it's fill the time right so uh like i'd run downstairs because optimus prime is stuck on a ramp and i'd be like hey here we go vamp well, you know, and so Elaine is up Optimus interviewing Prime a chair and, a ramp, yeah, so, you know, yeah. there's your saving grace you know just right. bring out Optimus Prime and the dinosaur and you're good to go like yeah yeah so you gotta fill time while they get up there so okay 
let's get let's actually talk about mm, I don't know a topic. So um, <laughs> unless unless you covered all that while I was gone, and now we're just in the no, wrap up I've stage. No, I mostly talked about how I'm not going to finish your book series until I know you have a happy ending because I don't trust you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's legit. That's pretty good. Um, okay. So, um, yeah, where were we? Okay. I, I had notes somewhere. So do we actually get through, did we actually introduce so Janine? I, I was, think we no, were like I was to... talking about the other things I do, like, right. you know, okay. I have a podcast. So, which uh, own, your no, own your own <laughs> unique words is the yes. name of Janine's podcast. It is her catchphrase because she has one like yes. a marketing professional and, yes. um, yeah, so Uncommon Universes Press, uh, she is a CEO, CEO, right? CEO? I am the CEO of that. Like, I run it with a couple of senior partners, but as they like to tell me, I get to pass if one around, and they just get to do stuff. All right. So, <laughs> um, so marketing strategist for hire, marketing, which yes. is just really fun to say. Yes. Um, yeah, just generally writing industry businesswoman, somebody who spends a lot of time in this field and probably I, has good stuff to share now that we can yeah. hear her. <laughs> yeah, so I tell people they're like, you do all these things, and like I do all these things in one industry. So like, <laughs> if you want me to fix your car, I mean, I will literally probably call AAA or something for a for like an oil change. I don't know anything about a lot of things, guys, but I do know about specialization. Specialization. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So um. Oh yeah, yeah. She also she also has a thing for otters. So there you go. Like yeah, you that kind of happened will... by accident, but I just went with it. Like I just thought otters need to accidental shift to otters it, it happens yeah it happens to the best of us so <laughs> um so yeah if you if you hang out on janine's social media for you will encounter otters it will happen yeah. and 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 some death unicorns so that's that's also a thing that might that was happen. a dare that kind of got out of hand but i'm okay with it <laughs> <laughs> so yes all right um uh, okay so um yeah adults look at how professional we are super professional yes. Let's talk about writing prompts. All right. So um, this is like, this is all uh, precipitated by your new book coming out, which is a book yes. full of writing prompts. Uh, mm -hmm. But there are lots and lots of books of writing prompts. Mm -hmm. And frankly, yours are a little more fun. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, so could, could you, as I totally put you on the spot, could you give yeah. us a couple of sample prompts of things that are a little bit better than maybe some other writing prompts we have seen go by? Oh, uh, one of my favorite ones, and this I use a lot in my marketing, but it, it kind of, you know, you kind of have some ones you really can't top in a way. And this one is uh, you stick all of your characters in an elevator with an emu and the elevator breaks down. What do your characters do? <laughs> yeah. And this is great because like you get, like I have a number of characters who'd be like, what is an emu? Mm -hmm. And why is it looking at me like that? You know, like, and, um, <laughs> and then some would kill the emu right away. And then some would be mad if they killed the emu. And then some would, and some discover. would be killed by the emu because seriously, like emu, some you right? discover have the serious fear of birds that you didn't know about. Yeah. Some of them are like, why am I in an elevator? Like, you know, you've got lots of, I'm not happy in this <laughs> metal box that moves. Like there's a lot of things to go with. Mm -hmm. So, so I like, um, one of the things you talked about, um, is, taking prompts to explore characters. Uh, and, and I really hit on that because I'm going to, Oh, I'm going to step on some writing industry toes, but okay, it's fine. We're like anybody who's made it this far into the roller coaster is, you know, is dedicated yeah. at this point, but I hate character interview sheets and I really hate character personality typing and I'm sorry, but I said it and it's true and I'll stand by it. So that is, that is just, and obviously that works for a lot of people, but that's not a thing that I can sit down in a workshop and do. Mm -hmm. I discover who my characters are by watching them do things. And then I'm mm -hmm. like, Oh, I don't think I would have said that to the emu, but great. Now I know you would. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. um, so what you have done is you have condensed my process into a paperback. So, <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, wow, I feel so shallow now, but on the, but practically speaking, it's a useful, it's a useful thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I guess, would you, would you typically want to start this? Like, like if, for somebody like me, would you tell me to do this early on in the process? Do you usually recommend people do this when they get stuck? There are many right ways, but what do you typically recommend? Um, for this one, I usually say do it when you're ready to have fun. And so that usually means if you're really bored 
or you're kind of in a playful mood if you're really grouchy or something or you've had a really bad day like these books these um prompts unlock your creativity and your intelligence through the power of play if you're not in the mood to play right at that moment you're gonna find them frustrating and then there's certain personalities that really love character sheets um which i call like the driver's license way of creating characters in the in the world um and that's okay and if you if you tend to like I'm, obviously that things, works for a lot of people so i'm not gonna say people great. are wrong for doing it i'm just no. i can't yeah. and um and i tend to i'd usually do this after like long after the fact is created just to help categorize stuff but i don't use it for creation very much because i just don't think that way um so definitely use it when you're curious when you're bored when you need to figure something out and when you're open to playing with things, you know, so go into it. This sounds weird, but don't go into it with these giant expectations that this is going to be the most profound experience in my life. That's not why I wrote the book. Um, this is the way that you can kind of sneak up on those really cool things. And so the authors who have really gotten a lot of out of this tell me it just came at me from left field. I had no idea that this even existed like in my character. And I think a lot of times when you're stuck in a problem, or maybe you're just stuck because you've been writing the same scene or book for a while and you're just bored. Um, you need to kind of sneak up on problems and kind of tackle them from behind. And yeah. these questions are fantastic for that. And then I, they're also fantastic for marketing, which is why I have two sections um, in the book, one that's more for writing and one that's more for marketing. And um, even with that, like, they're a fun way to market your book without marketing your book because it's not marketing. It's just saying, look, this is funny and cool. Isn't this funny and cool? Do you think this is cool? Do you want to know what this character more? And it it opens up a more low stress environment instead of the very direct. Here's my book. Ta da! This is something we just keep coming back to, you know, here <laughs> on the land of Laura, where I get to whine about all of my things, and and I want to market without marketing is a mm -hmm. thing that we just keep coming back to mm -hmm. because, yeah, I'm from the Midwest. Like, buy my book doesn't flow off my tongue well, and um, so, hey, uh, Janine has a is it I think it's weekly or every other week at this point. I think it's, it's weekly. Oh, uh, no, it's the weekly one random question. I've been doing that since yeah. 2017. Yeah, and that. It was, she'll just put up like a random question, like mm -hmm. you know, what flavor of ice cream does your character like? Or mm -hmm. you know, why is your character chasing this, you know? Or one of my favorites um, that I did uh, was your character is taking off their clothes before bed. Um, where, do they throw them on the ground? Do they put them in a basket? Were they not wearing clothes? Do they not care? Like all those things. And it's one of those that makes people feel slightly awkward, but it's really great for oh, it's showing a lot of things about your characters, including their sense of security maybe the security of where they live. Um, of course, if they're messy or not messy, but you can just really expand and unpack that one um, in really fun ways. Yeah, and 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 I I'm honestly don't remember if that prompt that you just mentioned made me think of this, like recall mm -hmm. it, or if that prompt made me write it. I, I But I'm gonna just give you credit for it and I'll just say like, okay. your prompt made this right. Like, I'll take it. I, yeah, um, but I have a character, you know, getting dressed in the morning Mm -hmm. And his clothes are not where he would normally have folded them neatly. And there's mm -hmm. like a ton of information that goes Ooh. with that. And, yeah. And, um, and so that is you know, the same kind of like, okay, why is this different? You know, and this, that's actually a ton of information. And, and she's sort of just little things like, you know, the, where would it normally be? Why, what would make that change? You know, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm, I, one of the things I love is, I don't know if there's a right way to say this, but I, I call it writing in negative space. Yeah. So, um, you know, we're, we, you know, we used real paper for this event. Well, <laughs> what do we normally use? Like why, mm -hmm. and why is this different? You know, so that, that kind of thing. So just, and that's, that's an important part of good writing that I think people miss a lot of times. And when you, again, when you come up problems really directly, cause I, I am a very problem solving kind of person. And so, you know, when you're creating a character until you know what they are, that's kind of something you have to figure out and analyze. But if you just fill out a questionnaire that says, how does your character wake up in the morning? That's just kind of like, it's so direct that it can be boring. But yeah. if you ask a question that makes you feel a little uncomfortable, a little weird, it might reveal some awkward things about the character. Like maybe, maybe they're not always in bed alone or something or this thing or that thing. It kind of unlocks that part of your brain and makes you think about 
so those sort of empty spaces more and think um, helps you to think about showing characterization in different ways than just being so very direct. Yeah. Um, and again, being too direct is a little bit like, you know, again, telling. And whereas these kind of prompts unlock your showing side without you feeling like, I have to show something. How am I supposed to do that again? Why did yes. the editor keep putting that in my manuscript? <laughs> Things like that, you know? It's freaking editors, man. Okay. Um, <laughs> so what what is, yeah, I, I loved what you said a little bit ago about you know, like trying to sneak up on the problem mm -hmm. and tackle it from behind because... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, I am definitely, if I just sit there and I'm like, well, why is this character motivated to do X? You know, I just, no, I can't. Yeah, you know, but I can very tell like, you. you know, method acting. What is my motivation? Right. Like, you know, <laughs> I don't know. You're sitting in a chair staring at me. That doesn't give me anything to work with. Okay. Like you go out and do something and now I can mm -hmm. see who you are and what, what you're mm -hmm. doing. And, um, yeah, I have, I have my, I have a process that maybe shouldn't be emulated. Maybe I shouldn't talk about, it. I don't know, but okay. like, um, you know, if, if we were talking or, uh, about Shannon in, in my, my series, like he was so grumpy when we started and I could not mm -hmm. figure out why he was so mad all the time. He's like, he's not a fun person to hang out with at the beginning of the series. And, yeah. and he was, he was actually a prince at that point. Yeah, he wasn't an illegitimate. And then he's like, well, maybe if I weren't a bastard, I wouldn't be such a bastard. Oh, there like, you go. Okay. Oh, <laughs> huh. Now, now I know. Like, and of course, that's a huge plot thing, right? No, but, uh, but I just didn't know. So, yeah. So I think that's a very long way of saying getting into like looking at things from a different angle and, and just tooling around, doodling, just mm -hmm. doodle with stuff and see yeah. what comes out. Oh yeah, so, and that's sorry just, I thought I was cutting you off, so I stopped. No, it's <laughs> fine. No, it's fine. And again, getting into that creative mindset and just playing with things. And I do recommend, like, I have a paperback of this coming out that has nice, large, friendly, big sections to write things in. Write things by hand if you can. It unlocks your brain in so many better ways than um, typing. Actually, my latest book, I finally figured out how to attack it by writing it out by hand. And now I'm just doing this weird hybrid thing, which I've never done before. And 16 books so I'm kind of like what is this but you know I, I stare at screens all day when I work on client things at the end of the day my brain just did not want to sit there and look at a screen there was no inspiration so you know doodle it out draw an image of what inspires you if you're creative look at it and then draw the scene that's in your head of these characters doing these weird things or something I mean use that scene for character art sky's the limit like go from that and those those kind of fresh raw moments are really what makes books really compelling to readers and more fun to write and and wait, more fun yeah so this past week I've just been beating my head on you know I've got a story that I need to turn in on mm -hmm. deadline and <laughs> I technically think I've just finished the first draft so you know it's Ooh, fine good job. Deadline, I got it till next week we're good I got all kinds of time <laughs> um and um and then I'm trying to get a thing ready to launch as a serial and you know time is getting tight on that so I'm just you know bang 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 crunch 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 and it's real easy to lose sight of the fact that stories are fun you yeah. know and like that's the point of it so anything that can can kind of remind you that mm -hmm. Hey, remember why you got into this in the first yes. place, you know? And, um, so, so yeah. So anyway, um, as so I tell people, like if you're in it for the money, there are way easier ways of oh, making rob money. A bank. So, so much no, no, faster. No, 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 I know you'll feel but better if you're, about yourself. Doing, you're like, <laughs> Go grab you a might bank. as well make it fun along the way. Yes. And like, if you're not in it for the money, then you definitely should be making it fun along the way. Yeah, yes, um, yeah. So either yeah, way, yeah, yeah. there's no harm in making it more fun. And Absolutely. I think sometimes at a certain point, especially as, I mean, I think a lot of newbie authors get to a place where they feel like they have to be very serious because they want to be taken seriously. And then as you get professional, you start going, everyone's looking at me. I can't think about this. I can't be goofy or funny. I can't do this because like, I am a serious author and all the serious author books are well, I mean, they're really serious. Like, they're yeah. they're awesome. There's a lot of great author research. Because everybody's books and everything on the else. back cover going. <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, like... yeah, they they take themselves very seriously, and that's great. But that's not the only way that you can handle this. And sometimes you just need to realize, you know what? Like, 
I am making things randomly out of my head. This has zero. I am having arguments with my imaginary friends. All right, guys. Like this is how this goes. (laughs) Like, yeah. Just we'll just look at me. He's long past the point now of thinking that I actually know these people like in real life, which when we started dating, he was like, Do you know this? Like, no. (laughs) It's like, then why do you care so much? I'm like, because they matter. Yeah. So Shy Red Fox in the chat says, yes, 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 for the fresh raw moments. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Like uh-huh, that, uh-huh. that is, that is why we got into this. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't and actually that- for the millions of dollars we roll around in like Scrooge McDuck. Mm-hmm. No. And with so many books coming out nowadays and everyone, you know, people can get kind of insecure because there are so many books being published like every single moment of every single day. Having books that are fun and fresh and unique to like the way you see the world through these questions is a great way to make yourself stand out. And you might as well, because that's, you know, something that no one else can really copy. Okay. They can't copy your awesome random brain. They just literally can't so far. Thank God. We don't live in that cyber tech universe. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And and you, like, and this is, I'm just going to soapbox for a second while we're here, but oh, yeah. I've had several people say to me, like in the last period of time, um, yeah, you know, oh, well, I, I don't write super, you know, like you write angsty, emo, epic fantasy, you know, and I, and I just write, you know, fun stuff. And I'm like, fun stuff is important. Like mm-hmm. Real and also, did you notice 2020 went by like having some fun stuff was a good thing? And, um, yeah, so like there is not you don't you don't have to be super serious to be valid or legitimate. Well, and more than that, and this is something I when I work with different authors because I work with a lot of different kind of authors, and one thing that I always have to nudge authors who write in that, that very deep style, um which I have, you know, written, my, my fairy tale retelling is like a very intense sort of book. So I'm like, okay, I have legit creds now. Um, but <laughs> I went there. But the thing is, you have to have that contrast of something humorous in some way or something lighter in some way, or your darkness will just be like one long, glommy, zoomy, doomy, deathy thing. You have yeah. to have that bit of contrast in there. See, there's no real yeah. reason to not know how to add some well-placed lighter moments or something because otherwise your angst will have no texture right and it won't stand out It'll and there's like no one stakes big, like even yeah, in the no grimmest stakes. grim dark mm-hmm. well what are we fighting for if there's mm-hmm. nothing worth not if there's mm-hmm. nothing not grim and dark and, here, and the right? thing is the so. horror authors i work with because i have a couple of those they get that like they're they get that you oh, have to have horror people are great at that yeah oh, i know they're yeah fantastic. <laughs> so i apologize for the barking there are dead people being found in the field and it's <laughs> i just love that this is like a thing on the show <laughs> It's, it's, it's not usually a problem, but uh, but yeah, that this is this. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, she's trying to she's trying to do her job. She's trying she to tell is. you they're out there. She's like, do you know people are digging up things in our field? Yeah, it's it's, it's a thing. So um, yeah, so right now, yeah, there are it's a cornfield too. Let me just add and like give you the full visual, so you can imagine whatever you want to picture. As we were talking about horror authors, um, who are really, works great with that. Yeah, who are really good at you know balancing lighter and heavier elements. So because that's what makes horror work, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it does. One hundred percent does. Yeah. So um, yeah. So I've got I've got prompts and I'm, I'm creating things and I'm discovering things about my characters that I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I didn't, I didn't know that they felt this way about salad, but now, now I do. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, I've got all these things. So, um, so how can I, this is great, but <laughs> actually I was kind of writing an angsty emo epic fantasy and I mm-hmm. didn't know how salad was going to fit into that. You know, <laughs> what, what do I do with those, those things that did get me thinking about my characters, mm-hmm. but it's not a direct translation into my manuscript. Okay. So you never know when things are going to come up with characters and such things and you really never know what's going to attract readers and so that's the other amazing side of this um is that even readers of angsty dark fiction love they love some laughter now and then they really do (laughs) and so i do have a lot of great character prompts and they're fantastic and you should use them but the other thing that i do and i do this on my one random questions weekly prompts too is that i have questions that i ask the authors and those ones are great because you can answer those or use those as ideas to again talk in interesting ways about your book that are isn't just i'm writing this deeply poetic sad book 
And that can make you stand out online as well. And I understand making sure that it fits with your brand, but I also know what catches people's attention because I literally scroll through things and research things to see what catches people's attention. It literally is what I study. Um, and so in that section of the book, because it's in two different sections, one's more character and then one is more author related where I put the questions on the author. Um, there's all these fun things and ideas for how you can turn that into stuff that will help you with your marketing. Everything from stuff like if each of your characters was a candle scent, what would they be? Now, I mean, come on, in the YA moody genre, they love their candles and their candle scents. So you should know this answer. It is definitely the something uniquely his own scent. That is definitely yeah, the that scent. Is yeah. thing, but that is a huge thing there. Like there are yeah. so many, you know, you have the candle for your character. That is a thing. That is something readers love. That is something they will want. That is something that they will join giveaways to get. So you should know these things. And even then you get to be a little bit playful and think about sense and that kind of stuff. And that can actually help you add sensory detail into your story as well. So you can say, hey, this character does smell like this. They do have this kind of thing. Why is that the case? Do I need to add that sensory detail into my story? Is that going to be evocative for readers? Um, usually scent is one of the biggest things that readers like notice in books, especially if you're writing um, moody stuff, YA romance, paranormal romance, or conversely things like horror or stuff where everyone smells creepy and there's dead bodies and stuff like that. And so, I will take any prompt I can get to help me get more, you know, like there's some things that I'm, I'm naturally like, this is the, these are the senses I tend to lean into. Mm -hmm. um, nobody has a clue what my characters look like. It's a complaint I get all the time because I don't know what they look like <laughs> because I'm face blind. I have prosopagnosia. Mm -hmm. I don't recognize people really very well. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm, I do a lot of things with body language because that's what I do. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so it, one of those things that once, once I know where my weaknesses are and, and you can you know, start finding things like, okay, you know, what, what, what does their hair look like? You know, what mm -hmm. does their, you know, things. And because all these people who cheat by getting to like cast their characters and put that up. And I'm like, it's a bunch of people with two eyes. Great. You know? And, um, and uh -huh. so, you know, yeah, I mean, that's just right there. I guess that was, I bunny trailed <laughs> off there, but where I'm going okay. is, where I'm going is, um, you know, sometimes we need an extra boost to, mm -hmm. to get, I know, that more visuals would be better for my marketing. I'm aware mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. I don't cast my characters and I don't draw. So I need, you know, to, other things. Other things to make it evocative to yeah. people and to give them something to really stand around, to be connected to. If you're going to build a tribe, tribe likes shiny things. Tribe likes cool things. Yeah. So I give you questions to help you find shiny, cool things to, to fling at the tribe so that they get part of the journey and all so, of that. So on that note, would you just post like here's a prompt and here's an answer or how would you best set that up to to get to really maximize your marketing value from it from something like that okay so if you're looking for something once a week literally follow me on facebook or instagram because i post up a prompt once a week and it's a great way for you to just say hey if i pay attention to this janine's literally going to be put her teacher thing on and poke me once a week and say hey answer this and i do try to nudge people, free. Like, don't don't <laughs> just answer this use it on your own thing share the thing and put it um, on your own page or something. And believe it or not, that can be eye-catching itself. I make eye-catching graphics. And anything that's out of left field like that, you know, having these giant weird questions as you're scrolling down will get people to stop and notice it. So even if it's not like totally on brand, even like my brand is like Grays and Janine put this like really bright lemon yellow thing up there. Well, you know, once a week is not going to kill your brand and it will catch their attention from all the gray stuff. So it's going to be okay for you. Um, Otherwise, you could like literally um, just post the question and the answer. Um, I do recommend that you try to find ways of making it visual if you can, because it will attract more interest. Go on to stock photo websites or something and grab something interesting that's evocative of that. Even if it's not a person, grab an interesting image of a place. Um, one of the questions I have is, what place in your story world um, would you turn into a theme park ride? <laughs> So hop into, um, I mean, I can, I'm, I'm the kind of person that I point you to stock photo websites because I know you're not going to get chilled by using those if you just yeah. like, 
buy a thing with a credit. So yay, deposit photos through AppSumo. You know, it makes your life so much easier. So if you want to use something like Pixabay, the thing is, it's not the fact that, that they're not open source, it's that the things that people upload are not guaranteed open source from yeah. them. So yeah. if you must, go to Unsplash, please. Because <laughs> it's a little bit, you're more likely to find things there. Yeah. But just find, I mean, a picture of an old amusement park ride. It doesn't have to be exactly what's in your story. Um, and if your story is like not science fiction or fantasy, then that's even better. But it will catch people's eyes. It will catch their attention um, or write a bit of a scene off of it. I think that sometimes as writers, we're a little bit too precious with our words. And I say that all the time. And it's hard because, of course, you want to be precious with your words. These are your words. You have to edit them. You have to look at that document 20 different times. The whole thing. Why? It's mean. But at the same time, you have to be willing to give out snippets here, there, and everywhere at certain times if you want to keep catch people's attention. You got to give them free samples. So turn that into like a fun scene that might never happen, or you know, make a script out of it, or make a little video or something like that. Um, and if you really want to, again, just find a pretty picture and literally just have the question and the answer. It'll still catch people's attention. It's better than doing nothing. I know some authors struggle with just showing up consistently at all. If you want to just have an image and an answer, question and answer, that's okay too. Give you yourself a low that, bar. Like you can yeah, always raise no, it really, later. Really right? do, okay? Because yeah. sometimes you're just like, I just have to show up at all to get points. And guess what? You do get points just for showing up consistently. It yeah. literally, that does do the work for you. And then are there any prompts that I shouldn't post like that, that are not going to, I mean, obviously like massive spoiler, you know, <laughs> he's the murderer. The, I have um, had some things that I can't, I can't answer my own questions. Like I had a couple of questions I posted, like, I can't answer this for my <laughs> story because I would give away everything. Like, I think I've answered a couple with just redacted, you know, but you know, yeah, it's yeah. just, um, but yeah, aside from massive spoilering things, you know, is there, is there a point where I look at this and I go, okay, this was really valuable for me to do, but it is not a marketing piece. It was a, for me as the author piece and it was a craft piece. And I like, is, does that exist? And if so, where do, how do I find that line? Um, in general, I chose questions that you should be able to answer and get something out of. So I tried to weed through all of my like hundreds of questions and find the ones that were going to be the most likely to be to be engaging. And then I had like my beta readers look over and I had my husband look over. He's actually a very, he's very picky about my questions because he was an elementary school teacher and he knows fun things. And so I look and go, <laughs> That's not quirky enough. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> um, so. But... I think like some of the questions I have are things that are designed to get you interested. So the whole, you know, what what scent would your characters be? That's not really something you're going to want to share. That's more of something I want you to do something with. I want you to use that in some way in your story. Don't start talking about character scents that may not connect with, with your readers. Now, conversely, if you want to say, hey, what sense do you think they would be? Then you have an engagement question and engagement means that it drives the algorithm up and it's a beautiful thing and there's ownership and we all get to talk about fun things together. Yes. So things like that, where I'm prompting you, like your favorite candy that you give away with your book or what books would be next to your book on a, on a bookstore shelf. I'm doing that to try to help you figure out things about your marketing. Uh, the one about, hey, if you were in a bookstore, what books would be next to your books on the shelf is a sneaky way of trying to make you find comp titles because authors don't like doing that. And so I'm always trying to find a million ways to get unlock your brain and say, hey, think about it this way. What would be next to it? You know a bookstore. Where would it be? And that is so good because like the, the freeze, the total mental freeze that happens when I'm like, I'm going to sit down and write a marketing plan. You know, like comp absolute title. panic. So um, I'm sorry. Give me one second. You don't understand. They are right outside mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. stuff. You know, yeah. So Ew, just gonna do. collect collect this poor dog who's trying her best to save us all from the zombies. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, thanks thanks for saving us. We're, we're, we're safe now. Thank you. <laughs> so okay. Um, anyway, where was I going? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's just the the I'm gonna sit down and write a marketing plan, and I need comp titles, and I need mm -hmm. teasers, and and I, I'm just gonna give you a shout out. One of the best things that happened, uh, for, you, you know, when you write, you're like 
clicking along and you're going and you write that set and you just write that sentence and it's like yes <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm not terrible after all this is a good sentence <laughs> gotcha. you know yes. and um and you're so happy and and nobody's gonna see it for like I don't know two and a half years right so yeah yeah and Janine told me to copy it and put it in a file and then like use it in marketing and I was like oh well that just makes sense yeah yeah uh okay yeah. but now I have permission to share the thing that made me go <laughs> and um yes absolutely and, yeah and I still have to do a lot of filtering because a lot of times the reason like context matters and that's why I'm giggly over yeah it. T- tiny shout out for Janine I am working on a whole challenge and things on how to choose book quotes that will actually work well with you and actually Good. you can put them out there just it's where, not happening in July because I'm launching a book but where happening. will we find this challenge <laughs> So if you actually sign up for my email newsletter, they get to know about everything first, Excellent. always, Segway. including first access. And actually, I kind of use those as my guinea pigs as well. So if you cool. want testing out for things, that happens on my email newsletter. Awesome. Awesome. So I will keep an eye open for that. But you no, know, yes. that's a, seriously, like that is a thing where now I have permission because I am definitely that person who's like, I wrote the thing. Let me reread it 27 times. Move that mm-hmm. comma move the comma back. Okay. And now I have permission to, no, I can share it in its raw, you know, undistilled Mm -hmm. form Mm -hmm. because, you know, one, it's social media and nobody expects spelling anyway, but two, (laughs) like it's it's going to be cleaned up by the time, Mm -hmm. you know, it ends up in a book. And so if I screw up, I posted a snippet this week and my mom, Mm you know, private messages me and she's like, you have a typo in your snippet. And I'm like, okay, it's fine. She was a journalist. Like that's a thing. Um, but I was like, yes, she's right. So I went in and I edited it. Like, you know, it's fine. Like, can, can I do say that. something? Yeah. Typos will always happen. And I get really spastic about them because I'm an editor and I do occasionally do some copy editing for people. So select people. My, my style is a bit different because I also do it in market focus. So I actually will look at your individual itemized words and help you figure out how they'll connect with readers because I'm a nerd. But I get kind of like really nervous because like people are going to look up to me and everything. But in the end, and I have a, I have a good friend or two who says, say, Janine post it. Do it. No one will remember it in a week. You're the only one who's thinking about this. Just do it. And I have very grounded people who just look at me like, you will do this now. And I do. And then it's done. And then everyone is great with it. And even though the reel wasn't perfect, they thought it was awesome. So doing is better than perfect. That's like an axiom, but it's very true. Yeah. So just do it. And I, I think really there's something because I'm the same way. I'm like, you know, like words are the thing that I use, but shy, shy red fox just signed up for your newsletter. So <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs> uh, words are my currency. Words are my mm-hmm. job. So if I get it wrong, mm-hmm. that's I'm bad at my job, right? Like that, mm-hmm. that makes sense to me. Um, but also I have to understand that 98% of the time, I'm using the right word. I'm spelling them correctly. Like I don't have dangling whatevers and, you know, all of these things. Mm-hmm. And then, so the time then I do, you know, like look at this and I'm like, who put that comma there? Jeez. And, um, you know, but, <laughs> but the maj- people are going to know that that's not happening in every post. Right. So I don't, I can, I can just tell myself to get over my hangups and move on with my life. Well, so. and here's a couple of things. This is one of my sort of stomping grounds with this is that I think in the writing world, we need to have a lot more grace with ourselves. We need to keep striving for excellent things, but we need to have a lot more grace with the idea of perfectionism because it's not going to be there. And one of the things that I I try to sort of steer clear of is places where people are really harping on, well, I hated this book because this one period was out of place. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? You have every right to do it because you are a free individual who is allowed to have your own opinions. But that lack of grace, I would have difficulty, I mean, honestly, feeling safe from people. If you can laugh at your mistakes and you can be humble about it, then that actually makes readers feel safer around you, feel safer to be vulnerable in your books, feel safer to connect with you as a person because they know that you're not going to look down your nose at them. So be a little more vulnerable, guys. It's okay if you have some people who decide that they hate your stuff because it's not perfect you don't want to have to measure up to that every day of your life for individuals who who have that you know you don't want to put that on yourself it's hard enough doing this job without trying to please people who are being really perfectionist by their own choosing or their life or whatever um it's okay to work to attract people who are going to be a little more gracious okay and so 
you know, take yourself a little less seriously. And let's just try to do that in general. Be excellent. I mean, I, I'm an editor, so I look for excellence. Yes. You're never going to be perfect. So be just, excellent. Okay. But also just, be I give you permission to, to not be perfect because it won't happen anyway. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, and I think that's, that's completely, like, if I set that expectation, mm-hmm. then that's also on me, right? Like, mm-hmm. like, and then I'm pretty open about here's today's snippet. Like, it's really mm-hmm. raw. Like, it, this could look totally can I, different. Can I tell you a secret? You <laughs> yeah. Half the time, and I don't mind, I don't even mind sharing this because I'll, you know, I'll openly say this in my reader group. I'm just this very chill, weird person. Um, sometimes I'll share things in my reader group that like later I literally have rewritten the entire chapter and it doesn't even exist anymore. <laughs> I have these whole chunks of things and they're like, wow, this is intense. I'm like, yeah, I deleted all of that because I had to go in a different <laughs> direction. <laughs> so you know, don't be precious with those things. They still connected to the words. They still got a taste for my writing. They felt seen because, you know, I don't always have books out as quickly as other authors do. I maybe have like hopefully one or two out a year, which is a lot for some people, but you know, there's some who have it once a month and I'm like, never. Um, so it, it's that connecting point, that authentic connecting point saying, hey, I'm just going to throw this out. Um, one of the most terrifying things I did was throw out some excerpts that I hadn't edited on my email newsletter list got some major love. A couple of people said, Hey, you know, you had a typo here, but I put it at the start. This has been unedited. <laughs> yeah. And I haven't done anything to it. This is just what like, it's going to be. And they just love getting to see it. I want to know about that. Like if I get a book out with a typo, tell me guys, I mean, don't mm-hmm. cut yeah, me so out. Just tell me, me know, like, that's but, fine. Uh, mm-hmm. But, but yeah, if it's, if it's in snippet form, there's a good chance that none of those words are going to look the same next week anyway. Yeah. So yeah. like, if and if you, and if you are insecure, just say, here is an exclusive or special or super cool, unedited thing. Yeah. And it lets them know, you know, right. this is like a deleted scene from a movie. You're not going to have the cinematography perfect. There's not yeah. any background music. Well, when okay. you look at the deleted scenes, the film, like a lot of times they're wireframes. They don't have a background. Yeah. You know, they're still on green uh-huh. screen. Like just set that expectation. Now, if I say this mm-hmm. is going to be a finished, this is a really good scene. This is all done. Then, okay, then it needs to be. But if it's like, Hey, I wrote this this morning at 3 a.m. You know, oh, without... that'll, that'll get you lots of actual people who want to see what you're writing at 3 a.m. <laughs> right. And, uh, and that's probably when it happened. And I can't necessarily tell you that all those verbs were supposed to be in that order at that, you know, at that time. But yeah. 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 So, okay. Cool. Um, so, oh my gosh, how did it get to be? It's 10 minutes till. What the heck? Okay. Do so, we have any questions or just people? Yeah. Who <laughs> um, I haven't seen any questions come through the, the chat, fine. but apparently, guys, we're going to keep going until like we until the room runs out of oxygen. So, if you have questions, <laughs> now would be a good time to get them in before Toss we have them to. Toss in like, there. Pick my brain. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, <laughs> I will say, um, and and Janine like did did not prompt me in any way to say this, but she has a lot of really good services for authors. You should probably check out her website. Um, I know I've done some some marketing consult and stuff with her, and it's um, it's it's worthwhile. So just you know get on her newsletter list and watch for her things. You know you can pick up a lot of really good stuff that way. Yeah. It is encouraging with lots of homework. And that's pretty much what every client said. Like, this is really encouraging. You also gave me 50 things to do. I'm like, but isn't it going to be great? <laughs> I just wanted you to pat me on the head and tell it me it was fine. It was going to be perfect. I just needed that. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> no, but no, but legitimately there are, um, there, there are really good, really good things, both free and paid services. So definitely check those out. Well, thank um, you for the shout out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was a reason I wanted you to come talk to things like yes. you have good stuff to offer. So um, so yeah, did we actually talk about where to find this book that we keep discussing? Is that, no. <laughs> should we mention that at any point? We should probably <laughs> mention that. Yeah. Yeah. Where can I find your book, Janine? So the, the best place for you to do that is just to hop on to like Kindle or your nearest online bookish retailer. Most of the time it's Kindle, but if you happen to love Kobo or something, guess what? This book is wide. I try to keep my writing resources wide so that as many authors as you know, out there can access them. So it's called Weird Writing Prompts. There's no other book with that name out there. I checked and no other book looks like it and no other book promises what it does. So if you find the weird writing prompts, I guarantee you it's the one you're probably looking for with all the pretty colored pencils. And it's an ebook and paperback, I believe. The paperback is coming out. Okay. Okay. 
So um, the paperback is hovering in the wings, waiting to I launch. I might just sneak it out in the next couple of days. But the Kindle's on, okay. you know, official pre-order, so I can't do that with the Kindle. Because, I mean, I could, but nah. I think I have some marketer people on my lovely launch team who would be a little cranky about that because they're planning the exact release day. So I won't be okay. to them. Okay. Yeah. But, yeah. So, <laughs> so anyway, these are things to look for and grab that on pre-order. And um, yeah, and then her website and her, which is on the screen and her newsletter it's which is somewhere on the chock website full of stuff yeah there's plenty of links on the website there's lots of blog posts there's podcast episodes there's free worksheets if you click this button or that button and it's fun it's happy it's orange so much teal. homework you can sign up for yeah. <laughs> no right and so. i just keep making more and more <laughs> but but that's good because again i, I mean i i can easily work myself into the rut of I have to fix this problem. I have to fix this problem. Mm-hmm. I have, and, and like, no, let's back off of that. Let's do something else. Let's do something fun. And then let's come at the, oh, by the way, there's a solution to your problem, you know? And, yeah. um, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it, you know, I, I think there's, there's a lot to be said for, let's go on a guided tour in another direction and then see mm-hmm. where we loop back around to. So, yeah, th- there is something you said for hyper-focusing on a problem being unhelpful. And so whenever I can help people to just steer around that and, again, sneak attack it, then you should sneak attack it. Oh, man, you, your brain can do so much when you <laughs> let it chill for a little bit. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> and, like, like, at this point, I just know, like, okay, I'm beating my head on this thing. I'm beating my head on this thing. I'm yeah. going to go eat something with sugar in it, and I'm going to go yeah. do something totally else. And I'm, I, I've just learned that my subconscious will work better if I get out of its yes. way. Yep. And, yeah. And again, don't be afraid to try something different to get it out of its way, whether you're a first time author or if you have written many books. OK, we're all on this journey together. We're all having to work with these weird neurotic brains that for some reason want to turn imagination and nothing into words on a page that make others happy. OK, it's, it's a very weird thing to be doing. And that's OK to find it weird. It's OK if you have to do weird things to make it work. And it's perfectly normal if different things work for different books, because that's, I I loved, I loved, um, I'm pretty sure it was Neil Gaiman. I hope I'm quoting the right person. Um, And I think it was American Gods and Neil Gaiman. And he said, Mm -hmm. I finally figured out how to write a novel, which like we all get a little, if Neil Gaiman's like, I finally figured out how to write a novel. I'm like, okay, I could get a little grace for my screwed up comma. But anyway, um, but but then he, and I have no idea now who he was talking to. And they said, no, you yeah. figured out how to write that novel. Like, oh, but on the other hand, it means whatever I'm doing that's working is the correct thing for this book. Right. So. Yeah, exactly. The thing is, this is something I actually just brought up. Um, well, I didn't just bring it up, but I just turned it to an audiogram. So I was thinking about it. We think about writing so much as a business and a productivity and a, you know, an exercise, Writing is also therapy, and unfortunately for you authors, just because you don't want it to be therapy doesn't mean it won't work as therapy. There have been so many psychological tests and scientific studies to prove that it's writing something out is part of processing things in your brain. So no matter how much you want to treat it like, you know, a system or anything, your brain is not a Ford Motor Company assembly line. Okay, like it or not, you are processing stuff in your head. You are processing trauma. You're processing issues. You're processing joy through your writing. You can't help. You're probably not processing the thing (laughs) you're writing about. Okay, so don't even Mm -hmm. try that. Just just let it go. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) But you know, you're going to hit weird stuff because our brains are weird places, and you can't just say, "Well, this will not be therapy. I will not do that this time." Yeah, that. (laughs) Good luck with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which is why sometimes when I, I talk to my, my coaching clients, they're like, wow, you're asking all these like odd questions. And I'm like, well, that's probably where the problem's coming from because our brains connect weird things together all the time, which is lot. what makes us fiction writers to begin with. If we yeah. were not connecting weird things, we'd be writing like technical manuals, you know? Yeah. And, you know, there's so much, again, I'm like how we relate and how we process things by turning them into stories, like yep. whether or not we meant, you know, some, something like, um, you know, Oh, you know, uh, one time, one time this kid would like, didn't stay close to his grandmother and he got kidnapped. So this is why you need to stick close when you go out to the mall or, you know, another step. Yep. And so we, we don't just say stay close to me. We, mm-hmm. we do it in a story form. 
usually crazy urban legends, but it happens. And um, <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, um, I still like if when when my horror career takes off, I'm gonna blame my grandmother. That's that's how that works. So. <laughs> Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Eventually I'm going back to my, my, my horror comedy stuff and that's just going to be a, a boatload of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm just, I'm just going to write all the things she told me about when I was small. Okay. Um, yeah. So it is, it is time that we should actually wrap up at this point. So right. I have not seen any questions come in. We have, we have people, uh, but yay, we have people, no questions. Though. So yay. Um, <laughs> that's just fine. Like I, I, they probably couldn't have gotten a word in edgewise with the way we were going. So <laughs> yeah, that happened. So, um, so guys check out Janine It is on your screen. I, and, Yay. Uh, yeah. And, um, and just, yeah, just watch for all the, all the tools that are, that are there. There's a lot of really good stuff there. And I, definitely read Janine's newsletter every month when it slides into my inbox. Yeah, no, because it's usually full of good things. And, um, and it gives me permission to share things that I don't have to obsess over. So (laughs) yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And then brief housekeeping notes. Um, next Tuesday, I don't have a calendar in front of me and I have no idea what we're doing. We'll check it. It's the 13th. I know that. Yeah. That's nice. (laughs) I'll be on the road. So I wonder what's on the schedule. Yeah. So yeah, Janine's going to be on the road heading to the Realm Makers Writing Conference. And I will be on the road on the 14th heading to the Realm Makers Writing Conference. Oh, cool. So um, yeah, we'll see you. Hi. Um, So there will, uh, there will be a stream on the 13th, but I have no idea what that will be. Um, it's so, I'm so organized. I'm such an adult. I probably knew that at some point earlier, but it's gone now, but that is our, let's see, this was our craft I'm sorry, this was our marketing. That will be our craft week. So it will be something okay. craft related. Uh, maybe we'll be doing prompts. I don't know. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that's just keep an eye on that. After that, mm-hmm. we'll, we'll have our create in and you know all our, of our usual Thanks. our usual themes. Um, but yeah, I think I just wanted to mention that the, the, I was heading to the conference and I had probably had a point when I started. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Yay. It's we can do so- a conference this year in person. I know, I know, I know. This is actually the first one I'm going back to live. So for all yep. of my, for all of my events. Yeah. Um, and I'm still have some virtual conferences later in the year. Mm-hmm. And then I'm, um, I'm actually going to be teaching at uh, Rocky Mountain Fiction Writers. I'm doing two or three sessions there and that's hybrid. So that'll be oh, live okay. and virtual. So that'll be fun, but I'll be live. So yay. Yay. Um, yeah, we're going back to the stuff. Um, so anyway, all that to say, we we got we got good things going on. Just keep an eye on on stuff, and we'll I'll, I'll yes. tell you things when I write them down because that's why I write things down. And that is it, Janine. Thank you so yes. much for joining me on this Absolutely. utterly chaotic ride tonight. Um, okay. Wow! And so, but hey, we we got the internet back. We got to yes. um, we got to like we got your audio up. We got all the Yay. fun things. <laughs> Uh, it is a lesson in perseverance, so we're in. Mm-hmm. And um, and then I will see you next week, and I will see everybody else next week on the stream. And that is it. Have a fantastic week. Happy writing. Go create something cool. Take care, everybody. <laughs>